DCR TV's Dave TV is on the air. Hello, everybody. This is Hot Dave. I'm Hot Dave. <laughs> so what I'm doing, um, <clears throat> what I'm doing is trying to cut costs. You know, it's been a tough year. We've uh, lost a couple of sponsors. We're, we, we were get good traffic. When you look at DCR TV, we're, 18, we're coming up on our 18th year. We've had good traffic this year. We have lots of people on Facebook and Twitter, uh, YouTube. The Dave TVs are getting good play and all that. But I'm noticing ad revenues down a little bit, about 15, 20% this year. So <clears throat> I'm looking at ways of just kind of cutting my costs. You know, one of the things I did was cut my TV cable service, which saved me about $80 a month. Uh, doing some other things. One of the things I'm doing is an experiment. I'm trying not to run the AC this summer, okay? My AC is kind of old, and I do have a home warranty thing on it, but it's in there, by the way. That's why I'm pointing over there. It's in the little cabinet over there. But uh, it needs some work. It's, it was doing some malfunctioning stuff late last summer. I just shut down the AC. It ran the heater fine. Anyway, I just... I, and plus, my power bill. In, when I run the AC, my power bill is double. Okay? And this is a relatively small condo. My power bill without the AC is about $45 a month. If I run the AC, it's 100 or even more than that. So, you know, that's another savings I can do. So I'm trying to see how long I can go this year without running the AC. Okay? <clears throat> so today is the 12th of June, 2015. And... <laughs> things are going pretty well <clears throat> according to the little fan here it's 90 degrees in here but it, it's running nice my friend Pete gave me this this is really cool it's got all these different settings and whatever I've got another little fan over here for the for the kitchen area as you can see so I'm very comfortable at the moment it's a little past noon um, and then I've got fans in everywhere else right so you look in the bedroom here, and I've got a fan over here. Two fans on me while I sleep. So that's cool. And I was, I was fine last night, you know. And uh, another fan in here in the, in the little um, den room here with the computer. I got another fan there. So that's one, two, three, four, five fans. And then the interesting thing is if you come down my stairs, don't look at the dirty carpet, by the way. So I won't show you the carpet because I've got complaints. But my neighbors next door downstairs have air conditioning and their air conditioning sneaks through this wall. And this is really rather cool down here. I mean, <laughs> if I open up the uh, crawl space door down here, look at it. It's just 80 degrees down here. It's a good 10 degrees cooler down here. So what I could do is put a sleeping bag down here and sleep down here. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyway, you know, but uh, I could drill a secret hole in the wall. Anyway, but anyhow, look at it. We're, we're doing okay. We're not even topping out at 90 yet, but uh, so far so good. But it's saving me money, so we'll see how it goes. Plus, I, you know, I'm doing my camo pants hiker. There's my camo pants. And one of the things with camo pants hiker is develop a hiking mentality. I mean, I would be maybe out in the wild hiking in weather like this, sleeping in a tent. There's no air conditioning. You know, so let's condition ourselves. Let's get conditioned for the hiking mentality. And let's see how long we can go without AC. Now, my AC kind of conked out in July last year. And I went through August and into September with no AC. And I was fine, okay? Now, August was a kind of cool month. But then we had a rather heat spell in early September. So, you know, I was fine. And so far, I've been fine. So we'll see. So let's see how, how long this goes. I mean, I can always... I could turn the AC on right now and it would work, but it would cost me money and it would drip a lot of water because there's some drainage problem in the, the drain thingy with the condensation. So, you know, I could put some towels around it or something, but if, I, if it gets that bad, I can always run it. It does work. Anyway, so now let's get on to what we're supposed to do here at Dave TV and let's talk about media stuff. Is three enough? You know, uh... I talked to a really good source yesterday, and my source yesterday insists that there's going to be some big cuts at CBS Radio across the board. A guy by the name of Andre Fernandez, who's a business guy, not really a radio guy, has taken over the presidency of CBS Radio, CEO, whatever you call it. 
and they're predicting lots of big cuts. He's a money man and he's looking at all these stations and maximizing profitability. Even stations that are making money, if they're costing too much, then he's saying, hey, things have got to change. The problem with WNEW, the CBS All Newser that was launched three plus years ago, is that it's got a big staff. I mean, it's, it, it is, you know, it's a well-staffed station. I don't know how many people work there, 35, 50, I don't know. A lot of people work there. And it's an expensive format to run in the Washington area. You have a whole news department you're running, okay? And the station just hasn't had any ratings traction against WTOP in the last year, couple of years. You know, it's, you know TO, uh, NEW maybe has cracked the top 20 in the latest ratings. Maybe they're up to 19th place or something. That's as far as they've gotten after three years. And WTOP is still solidly ensconced at number one. So... You know, and I've gone through so many ideas over the years and I've so many suggestions about what W what CBS needed to do. But it just comes down to this. Three is enough. Right now DC has three talk stations with all with good signals. Okay, WMAL, News Talker WMAL, 1059. They put the signal on 1059. It used to be just an AM or on 630. And when they did that, 105.9 is in Northern Virginia. So it's technically, I consider Fairfax County to be the center of the Washington market, even though culturally and her heritage-wise DC is. But I think when you look at population and when you look at just brutal capitalism, Fairfax County, which has twice the population of DC, is the center of Fairfax County, or is the center of Washington, the Washington Metro, and WT, WMAL's transmitter is right in Fairfax County. So they're right smack where they need to be. WTO, and WMAL's ratings have gone way up in the last year, thanks to Bill Hess. Ha ha ha. Anyway, WTOP is going along just fine at 103.5. We've talked about that many times. And, and when you want, you know, uh, one of the strongest national public radio affiliates in the whole country, WAMU at 88.5. These three stations, MAL, TOP, WAMU, are always in the top 10. And usually these two stations, TOP and WAMU, are often plugging for number one, with WMAL pretty much settled in at maybe seventh or eighth. Which leaves, what do we really need a fourth talk, major talk station in the Washington market? I think not. I think Washington is big enough for three. A fourth just ain't going to cut it. The problem that WNEW has had, and I will just be brief on this because I've talked a mile a minute over this, signal, signal, signal. Again, its signal is inferior to all three of these other signals. 99.1 is over there in Crofton, Maryland. You know, like City of License is buoy. They just have, you know, they just can't compete with 1059, 1035, 885 in terms of signal strength. They just can't do it. And number two, being an all newser, they have not been able to differentiate themselves and give people a reason not to listen to WTOP. You know, so, and then they're kind of straddling themselves now with adding some talk to the mix. But again, they, how are they going to convince people that they're banning WMAL? So WNEW is kind of this undercooked uh, souffle. It just hasn't been cooked right. Three years on, and, you know, so I'm hearing rumblings that Andre Fernandez is going to be making some big changes at CBS, and one of the stations that's probably going to get the ax is WNEW. That's what I'm hearing. I'm not saying I want that because I think there's some great people working at the station and I like the folks at NEW and I've having a lot of them as sources and friends, but that's just what I'm hearing. That, you know, there's going to be cuts at all of CBS stations across the country, including here in Washington, including in Baltimore. But the big one that's going to get the axe is WNEW because that's the one that's just bleeding the money, sucking the money up. You know, you put a, you could put a music format on WNEW, an oldies format, an oldies 80s format, something like that. Literally pipe in all the talent who hardly have any talent on the station. You know, you could just bring in syndicated stuff and you could quadruple the ratings overnight or triple them or even double them. I don't know. You would definitely get them way up and cut the cost by next to nothing. 
99.1, again, that signal covers both Washington and Baltimore, so there's some cool things you could do with that. But it just seems like the wrong place at the wrong time for that. Now, or you could put El Zol back on 99.1. It was doing better there than it's been doing on 107.9, which is out of Annapolis. And then do something else with 107.9, like maybe uh, a dual market oldie station or maybe even go into some sort of a rock format, like maybe harking back to the old HFS. So anyway, that's what I'm hearing now. That's the big news. So, hey, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, probably won't happen tomorrow, but... I would bet by the end of the summer we'll know more about the fate of WNEW and whether DC is really a four talk station market. I don't think so. All right, folks, thanks for watching Dave TV for the 12th of June 2015. Hot Dave on a hot day. Book 'em, Dano.